the American dream. That elusive fantasy in which anyone can make a million is alive and well all across the country, from pyramid schemes to hamburger franchises. And in Northern California, where it all started over a century ago, people are still panning, sifting, dredging, and praying. They've got gold fever. If I was to put that pan in that dirt, and I'd pan it out and I'd find a little nugget. It wouldn't bother me at all. But if somebody get all excited, they have gold fever. The symptoms are that a person tends to have a faraway look, and they often disappear into the mountains for a few days at a time. And after a few years of pursuing gold on the weekends, uh, sometimes they get it so badly they go into the mountains and never come back. I think gold fever is just greed in another form, just being obsessed with going, trying to find gold. Well, gold fever to me is a way of making a living and uh, doing your own work without somebody telling you what to do. With so many conflicting views, we thought we'd travel into the California gold country to investigate a little place called Downeyville. It developed as a mining town on the Yuba River over a hundred years ago and hasn't changed much since. It's still a first stop for someone going up to try their luck with gold, as well as a home base for the professionals. Historically, this has been one of the richest areas in the Sierras. In fact, it's estimated that between three and four hundred million dollars worth of gold has been taken from within the town limits. Hi, I'm Bill Drinkwater, and we're here for the gold panning and small-scale gold mining class. And what we will do first here is to look at some of the basic equipment that we'll be using. In the typical class that I teach, it has a number of different sections. And we also talk quite a bit about how and where to look for gold. And then we practice panning and talk about the panning techniques. Making sure that your pan is submerged and take out the large rocks. Now you move the pan around in slow circles. And if we were in bright sunlight, what you would see is what's called a flash in the pan. Oh, is that where that term came from? Yes. Now, as you do this, you will eventually get down to a little bit of black sand and your nuggets. The black sand is heavy. It's heavy sands and it's iron sands, and so they go last. Now, if you found gold the size of these bronze nuggets, you would be doing extremely well, and it would be time to stake a claim. Well, the scope of the store mainly is that I, I try to supply everything that the miner would need. Anything that would get into kind of the outdoors hobby or the treasure hunting affair, uh, something get rich quick. I've had uh, one fella, for instance, I'll never forget, he, he drove in from Texas with a big Cadillac, bought a dredge, tied it to the roof of his car, and said he was going to the Yukon and going mining. And I asked him, does he ever mind? And he says, no, but he figures it. He can figure it out and went to the Yukon with his Cadillac, which I, was a strange looking Jeep to me in the Yukon, okay? And he came back five months later. I bought personally two pounds of gold from him, okay? He had quite a bit more, I don't know how much. And he mainly came back to town, bought some more heavy equipment and some travel trailers and motorhomes. Um, my name's Mark Burroughs. I work in town, the Gold Nugget Jewelry Shop. My father owns it. And on my spare time, I get out and flush the bedrock or get in my wetsuit and do some sniping. A lot of the flood gold that comes down in the gravels, well, when it hits this coarse bedrock and these little cracks and crevices, the gold will lodge in there being heavier. Clean out his, his sniffer. It's what that little thing's called. It has, you suck up your gold and Inside, it's got a little little catch tray in it, kind of, and to where you can keep pumping water in and out, but the gold won't go out because of the gold being heavier, it won't be able to come up the tube. Oh, another bad one. None. It's a pretty hard racket. Most of them give up because they find out it is a lot of work. You don't just go down on a river and make a hundred dollars a day. Sometimes when the water's high or weather's bad, you're kind of lucky to make $10 a day with a lot of very hard work. 
Get a little jam. Ready? Get some gold. Thing. Little nuggets. Yep. I discovered quite a while ago that even in the early gold rush days, it was the shop owners and the uh, bankers and stuff that really wound up making the money. Uh, even the dredging, which uh, you move a lot of gravel fast with the dredge. So you can do as much in an hour as a lot of people to pick and shovel can do in a week. Well, the dredge is like a vacuum cleaner. It sucks all the rocks and everything right up through it, runs them through a sluice box, and then the gold being heavier, why it traps in the riffles and the screen inside the sluice box. Well, this particular dredge, uh, I think my partner's got about uh, $4,000 in it. Of course, I have 6000 not counting uh, mining claim taxes to the county and the mineral rights to the town site. Yeah. We know there's gold out here. It's just a case of finding it. But I think the river's up. It's getting swifter now, so another couple of weeks when the water drops, why well, we can get out deeper and get to something we know hasn't been dredged before. And then, hopefully, it should probably run, I would think, at least a half ounce a day through here, or better. Well, my name is Ken Vance, and uh, my partner, Al Del Pri, and uh, we started from dredging, and uh, I guess the gold fever has carried us right on into uh, getting out of the river and up here digging into the side of the mountain. We've got a small cat loader up there. We've got a sluice box. And so what you're looking at over here today is, uh, is right back almost to the 49ers. I mean, we're using the same system they did. We're using a sluice box, but instead of uh, sticking it in with a shovel, we're sticking it in with a small loader. So actually, it's the same system they used. I mean, it's just 100 and some years later, you know. In the Yuba River, of course, it's been mined by the, by the 49ers and then by the Chinese and then by uh, dredgers since the 60s. Uh, it's pretty lean pickings. See what's under there? A little chunk. Where? Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's Look at that little sunlight one. Well, there's a few little pieces in there, but... Hey, all those buckets for that amount of gold. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you can run a lot of gravel and get nothing, and then you can move one or two buckets and, and load it right up, so... We're taking the fines out of the first set of ripples, threw off the bigger rocks, and now he's looking to see if there was something hiding down in the grass there that we couldn't see. But no matter how, uh, how fancy the equipment, Al, right? I mean, you still got it. The last stroke is you still got to get it into a pan, and uh, that's no different than they did, you know, in 1849. They still had to get it in a pan. A little speck in there in the corner, and, uh, well, that's what you're looking at right there for that. What, about 15 yards of gravel, Al? Prog prognosis is we're going to shut down for the day. <laughs> and probably take care of a hangover. <laughs> Short days. All of the literature from the government always says, forget it, you don't, you don't stand a chance. You know, one in a million or whatever. But uh, the other side of the, the picture in the, in the press, of course, is the uh, treasure magazines that say everyone's going to make their million. So. Somewhere in between is the real world. We've been here for an hour or so and only made about 20 cents. My best day was, I'd say, about $10 worth of gold in a, in a 1918S quarter that was worth about 24 bucks in the condition it was. We had a week down there that uh, we ran, I think our best day was three and a half pounds. We had, uh, we took out 11 and a half pounds in six days, which, which was a, that's an exception to the rule. That was an exceptionally good run. Well, we're picking the gold out of the box. The gold we wish was there. This was, was not one of the better days. Just lots of lead. Miscellaneous garbage that's been thrown in the river. Even with all the bad times, I, you couldn't force me to go back and take a job and work for somebody else. And I think probably Al you got more years at working for somebody else than I did, and I don't think you'd do it either. It just turns into a rut, and you're always looking for that extra weekend, that vacation that you can get away from it all. You're always away from it all here. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like gold fever will continue to afflict treasure hunters for years to come no matter how much lead, gravel, and mud winds up in their sluice boxes. 
So if you think you're more than just a flash in the pan, grab your scuba gear and gold pan and head for the hills.